Hello my name is Tony Pham. Apple accidentally confirms iPhone 8 is massive. Apple is supersizing the iPhone. Numerous case leaks, schematics and dummy units all point to a 1.1 inch jump from the iPhone 7 seconds 4.7 inch display to 5.8 inches. But now Apple's own software has confirmed this. Like so many of the major next generation iPhone, Watch 3 and Apple TV 4K leaks. This information again stems from Apple's own HomePod beta code which it accidentally shipped full of product roadmap information. And like so many of these leaks, developer Steve Trofton Smith is the one who has uncovered it. In a new tweet Trofton Smith revealed he had extracted the exact metric screen points not pixels stating. These are the metrics used by the status bar on the edge to edge iPhone, including notch height and ear width. These measurements are finally precise enough for software designers, as opposed to the relatively greater flexibility afforded to case makers, leading Trofton Smith to declare. Designers, have fun. Furthermore this is the first formal confirmation direct from Apple that the iPhone 8 will deliver a massively increased display compared to the iPhone 7. In fact the iPhone 8 display will be the largest smartphone display Apple has ever made, larger even than the 5.5 inch display in the iPhone 7 Plus. Despite this it will be physically closer to the smaller model, that's quite some achievement. It also suggests that, if Apple were to release an edge-to-edge -edge iPhone Plus model in future that display could be close to 7 inches. There is one extra positive knock-on effect from Trofton Smith's discovery as well it shows the existing leaks about the iPhone 8 appear to be spot on. Specifically this not only verifies the design exclusive I delivered last month, but also suggests we should pay close attention to the huge 25 feature leak that followed equally seriously. Of course questions will remain over whether Apple has overpriced the iPhone 8, whether it is wise to kill off Touch ID and whether it will be hurt by the drastic stock shortages at launch. But what we can now look forward to with full confidence is the biggest redesign in iPhone history. Thank you for watching. For the follow up, subscribe to the channel yourself here. Finally, Apple will also introduce new accessibility features for the D22, according to today's reveal. The smartphone's lock screen and a status bar be upgraded with the latter nesting comfortably between the sensors on its top. Looks like a lot of upgrades are headed our way with the iPhone 8. If only it clear up on what Apple will actually call the device. Informed sources believe that we might get an iPhone, iPhone Plus and iPhone Pro this year. ITLL all be clear in a month. Thoughts? Let us know what you think in the comments section below and stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on the latest. Thank you for watching. For the follow up, subscribe to the channel yourself here. Look in the comments section below and stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on the latest. Thank you for watching. For the follow up, subscribe to the channel yourself here. With a glass back. Looks to me like the iPhone 7S will finally unlock the magical power of wireless charging for the iPhone generation, sabotaging a potentially unique marketing point of the iPhone 8. More details from the latest leaks here on Forbes. Forget the iPhone 7S or iPhone 8. Something else comes this way. And then there's the question of the name. The internet has seemingly settled on iPhone 7S, iPhone 7S Plus, and iPhone 8 Dash, or at least those are the terms you need to search for to find any news. That doesn't mean Apple will stick with those names. There's more than enough evidence from previous launches that Tim Cook has something else in mind. With all the talk of the iPhone 8 online, it's unlikely that even Apple's ivory tower view of the media would release three handsets with numbers lower than eight. Which means you have a basic model, a plus-sized phablet, and a highly specified and insanely expensive model. Apple already has a pattern for this, so let's reconfigure the lineup around the hip new labels and fit in with the numbering scheme to offer us the iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone 8 Pro. Except Tim Cook apparently has arithmophobia, so let's drop the 8 bomb and regenerate the lineup in the 10th anniversary of the first Apple smartphone. iPhone. 
iPhone Plus, iPhone Pro. Some justification on the new naming conventions here. Can Apple really live without Touch ID? Touch ID, the biometric fingerprint scanner on the iPhone range devices, looks set to be missing from the iPhone 8. Thanks to the removal of the home button, Touch ID would have needed a new home in any case. Options such as embedding it in the power button or using the Apple logo on the rear chassis have been mentioned, but these are being ignored. Tim Cook is going to gamble on losing Touch ID altogether and rely on facial recognition. As leaked in its own software, Apple will instead move all iPhone 8 security to Face ID, a new facial recognition that will hopefully work better than Samsung's erratic implementation in the Galaxy S8 and Galaxy S8 Plus which struggles in bright sunlight, low light and when wearing glasses slash sunglasses. But Samsung played it safer than Apple, because both the Galaxy S8 and Galaxy S8 Plus still retain their fingerprint sensors as a fallback. They are idiotically positioned, but they were still my default method of unlock within a week of using each phone. More here on Forbes. Improving your portrait. Lurking inside the latest iOS 11 beta release is new code for Apple's portrait mode. This is the dual camera powered bokeh effect where the subject is in sharp focus while the background goes out of focus. Apple has refreshed the settings, but also stores data of the original image capture so you can remove the effect for a clean portrait at a later time. Mike Weatherly has more. Portrait mode not only has exited its beta status, but has seen some improvements as well. The procedure to take the shot is unmodified, but the edit feature now allows for the effect to be removed at will and non-destructively. The effect still can't be applied retroactively if the image wasn't taken in portrait mode to begin with. All the details are at Apple Insider. Calling Dick Tracy, Apple Style. For a companion device, a lot of people want the Apple Watch to operate independently from the host iPhone or iPad. Apple more than likely has the technology to do so inside Cupertino's labs, but is it ready for the public? Bloomberg's Mark Gurman believes so. Currently, Apple requires its smartwatch to be connected wirelessly to an iPhone to stream music, download directions and maps, and send messages while on the go. Equipped with LTE chips, at least some new Apple Watch models, planned for release by the end of the year, will be able to conduct many tasks without an iPhone in range, the people said. For example, a user would be able to download new songs and use apps and leave their smartphone at home. More on the unconnected Apple Watch potential here. Go large an option for new MacBook Pro. As it stands, the MacBook Pro machines top out at 2TB of storage, provided by a pair of 1TB Vinan package. Now that the South Korean company has been able to increase the size of these chips, Apple will have the option to ship a Mac machine with a whopping 4TB of storage in the near future. Samsung announced a 1TB Vinan chip that it expects to be available next year. Initially mentioned in 2013, during unveiling of the industry's first third mint, Samsung has been working to enable its core memory technologies to realize one terabit of capacity on a single chip using a Venon structure. The arrival of a 1TB Venon chip next year will enable 2TB of memory in a single Venon package. More at Samsung, and the tip of the hat to Ben Lovejoy. And finally, following the lukewarm reception to Planet of the Apps, Apple's second original series has debuted and the reaction has not improved by much. Carpool Carao takes the short format sketch from the Late Late Show, ports it over to Apple's distribution system and increases the runtime. Has it worked? Rebecca Nicholson reviews the show. Apple has supersized his formula but, in doing so, has managed to misunderstand entirely what it is that made it charming. Judging by the first episode and what's teased later in the series, this is less about getting a revealing interview out of someone who may otherwise seem distant, and more about bowing down to the power of celebrity. Will Smith, who stars in the first episode, isn't there to have a conversation with Courtney. Has there to perform. The full review is at The Guardian. Apple Loop brings you 7 days worth of highlights every weekend here on Forbes. Don't forget to follow me so you don't miss any coverage in the future. Last week's Apple Loop can be read here, or this week's edition of Loop's sister column, Android Circuit, is also available on Forbes. Thank you for watching. For the follow-up, subscribe to the channel yourself here.